no más. Qué acordeonazo, papá. Puro tetera Tuesday. Ah, oh, no. Yo quiero ser. Saca el era Corden Dad. Ya feliz. Al fin poder sonreír. Yo ya no quiero seguir sufriendo sin un amor. La voz es una esa, ¿no? Oh. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag PVT Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Estamos en vivo y a todo color aquí del sur de Texas, South Texas, and Midterm Night. Dale más que voten. O ya deben de... Por todo, yo creo en Califas todavía pueden votar, votarnos a las 10 o las, uh -huh. las 9 de la noche acá, pero... A ver si se hace el Red Wave, como están diciendo. I don't know. Brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men and Women. If you feel sluggish, tired, gain weight, you're looking for a primary care clinic to help improve your quality of life. Dr. T's Primary Care for Men and Women, they handle your primary care needs. Call them up at 1-855-771-1650 or go to drtees.com. Learn more about hormone replacement therapy. Puede ser testosterone que te falta nomás y te chequeas y estás below level y... Estás en un level que, chihuahua, cada vez que ves Titanic te pones a llorar, carnal. Yikes. Es que te, te falta testosterone, carnal. Tiene la onda para parar las lágrimas, carnal. Oh, yeah. Ok, este, hormone replacement therapy, porque si no tienes enough testosterone en el cuerpo, te pones bien feelings de volar, carnal. Comienzas a llorar. <risa> Weight loss therapy también. IV vitamin infusion. Eso te da energía y te quita las crudas y la chingada en día que es. Peptide Therapy también. That's the fountain of youth. Si tienes tú un hijo de 35 años y tú tienes como 56, 60, los hijos, and you start going on that Peptide Therapy, van a pensar que son carnales. No padre e hijo. Padre e hijo. Se tiene que decir e hijo. ¿Verdad? Instead of e hijo. E hijo. E hijo. Make your appointment call 1 855 771 1650. DrTease.com offices McAllen and Harlan Norale. Es todo. Mejor morir a veces. También le quiero dar las gracias a Top Floor Classic Cars or Top Floor Cars Classic Car Dealership. No me cate, shut up. 301 South Market Street in Brenham. If you're looking for a specific vehicle or want to buy, sell, or trade, contact Tony or Carlos 979-337-1006. Tienen un carrito bruto. Cuando vi este carrito, yo dije, chinga, man, Jax Phoenix, his name's all over this one. A verlo. Es un 1960 Ford Starline. A la madre. Check this car out, bro. You, oh, that's you go clean. To, you go to Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, and you check out all the inventory these guys got in Brenham, Texas. Oh, man, look at that. A bruto, bro. Ese carrito, ese carnal. The one next to him, next to it, oh, the, the, with the, the, the one with the flame goes really good with me with the Phoenix uh, name, right? right? But bro. like, look at this one also with the orange. It's so shiny. Se me hace carnal. Se me hace remind un poquito del Batmobile, carnal. Does it say Selena in the back, or what did it say? I was see, you don't say. I mean, I didn't quite catch that, but look at the rest of that thing. I wow. like how it's dropped. See, looks like it has hydraulics or some shit. Maybe looks, airbags or something. And it looks like they lowered the roof too a little bit. No, they could have customized it that way. Man, I mean, you got to go to Instagram. They give you all the details there. Las troquitas allá atrás también. Mira nomás. Wow. 301 South Market Street in Brenham. This is a place to go, man. It's worth the ride or worth the drive if you're looking for a classic car. You can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and topfloorcars.com. Check out all their inventory. Orale, that's all. La C10, la Chevy que estaba atrás, te grisecita, estaba bruta. Yeah, brother. All right. Saludos para Tony y Carlos. Muchas gracias, Tony y Carlos. Big fans. Originally from the Rio Grande Valley. Bueno, ma. So we got my lovely wife, producer Rally. What's going on, sweetie? Hey, what's up? Shout out to everyone who's on the chat zone already. Sal in the house, Big Greeny, Dimas Estevez, um, Senor Rudo, everyone else. What's up? We also have Jax Phoenix. He's taking care of the chat zone. Jax, what's going on, Dad? How's everybody doing around the world? We're doing good. Uh, thank you for having me, Rock. Thank you, Rally. And thank you for our guests for being here tonight. 
Um, having a good time. I want to give a shout out real quick to all the people in the chat zone. Thank you for tuning in to the best live show in the Valley. Yeah, that's true. We are live right now. And I want to give a shout out real quick to Aurelio Perez, Hector Gallegos, Jerry Rodriguez, David Ramirez from Las Vegas, Victoria Garcia, Ernesto Gonzalez, Dimas Estevas, Estevez, Fernando Ambriz, Emilio Garcia Jr., Joey Prado from Parlier, California, Jacob Bacon Vela. Oviedo956, Dario Puig, Fat Cat 602 from Arizona, and Juan Hernandez from Moses Lake, Washington. Stay tuned for the until the end of the show so you can see the shoe prize that I have tonight. I'm gonna show you my <laughs> sneakers later on. So stay tuned so you can see what kind of sneakers I'm wearing. No son como las pantuflas de rally oh que presenté. <laughs> those are crazy. Oh those, those are the ugly ones. Those are the ugly ones. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you gotta follow me on TikTok. Go to at uh, Rock and Roll James 2020, and it's a TikTok, ladies and gentlemen. And I put, we were in, uh, there was a, this past couple of days ago, right? Sunday, was uh, it? I think it was Sunday. Yeah, was it Sunday? Well, I think so. Yeah. Pues, like, if it downtown, Macaleni, <laughs> pues, I needed to go. Uh, no, it was Saturday. I had to go pick up my beanies from Mingo. Oh, it was Saturday because the Ray. show was at, at Tina Ray. So Ray. I was yeah. going to meet Mingo from Mingo's Music in Westlaco. He's got a, he's got a store that sells all kinds of cool classic rock stuff. So I bought like six uh, beanies off of him, and le hice cash up la feria. Y hey, cuando andes en McAllen, tráete las carnal. So he was in McAllen for this uh, event that was going on downtown Sin El Rey. So we took off. Y pues yo ni le hablé, le hablé cuando andamos en camino. Y hey, todo no me arranco de Dana. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my wife says, oh, goody, goody, let's stop at Shop for Less. <laughs> Dang, oh. Classic. I, oh my god! <laughs> and then, I, and then I said, and I didn't even bring my purse. You're like, right? <laughs> they have to. I was kind of shocked because she was in pantuflas and yoga pants. You're not t-shirt que le colgaba hasta las rodillas, chica. <laughs> <laughs> y el pelo, y, y, pues, you know, she, terrible. Cuando se va así, she just goes along for the ride, guys. Yeah. She's not like, no, uh, no me voy a bajar en ninguna pinche parte, no way. Not when like you, this. Hey, but when you said downtown, I'm like, get out of my <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shake off my pantuflas. Let's go in there. <laughs> so I took oh video God. of it, and it's on my TikTok. And yeah. man, I don't know, it's got thousands and thousands of views. That's and hilarious. she and she just got a call from some fans in Stark County. You know, those girls, yes. they like the Harley, right? We've known them for a long yeah. time. Shout out to Lori. Hey, ¿qué te dijo Lori cuando te habló, baby? She's like, I just, I'm calling to ask you what, uh, where you got your pantuflas from. And I was like, oh my God, the ugly ones. I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. Jack said, well, oh, it's a TikTok, right? It's a TikTok. Ya son, ya están viral. Eso ya se fueron viral. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if you like entertaining stuff, you got to follow Jack's world, okay? Jack's has a, a channel, and it's already up to 100 subscribers. He just started it, but he, he's following himself all over the place with Chingo Bling. We got a clip, clips of it to show you in a little while, and you're going to want to subscribe right away because yes. this guy is, awesome. is, is, is it's, it's doing good. So we'll, we'll show you. We're going to make fun of it too, man. It's real funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right now, we want to introduce... Uh, should I call you Big Show, Anthony, Bernie, or what? 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 What should I call you, man? You call me Anthony, man. Oh, Anthony, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony. I, I'd rather just call you just Big Show, bro. Okay, all right. Because you're a big, you're the Big Show when it comes to accordion playing. <laughs> not, man. This is your show, man. You call me whatever you want, brother. <laughs> I just appreciate the fact that I'm here, man. Yeah, no, but bro, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a long while, man. It's been a long time. The last time you were just mentioning uh, Que Pasa 99.5 when you were there with the hometown boys. And uh, yeah. I haven't been there since 2011, <laughs> right, babe? Uh-huh. Yeah. But it's yeah. been about it's 10, been about, 11 years yeah. since I've, I that, since that station went totally. It's Since I left, that station's changed like three different times. Yeah. You know, formats. They, they couldn't just like it. But right now it's a reggaeton station. But when I was there, it was Tejano. We're playing Tejano, Norteño, all kinds of good mix, right? And you guys showed up, and you had just started playing with the hometown boys, right? Yeah, I think I had just started. Um, well, I, I can't remember when I when I started with them. Back in 09 or something like that is when I started with them. Yeah, you were just fresh with them. I yeah. remember. 
Yeah, man, man, so so you you weren't living here in the Rio Grande Valley back then. You were from no. like Victoria or yeah, something, right? Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was the He did just for men bringing back the memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I was in Victoria. Yeah, dude. And I asked you if you knew Joel Nava. Did you know Joel Nava? Yeah. yeah. Joel Nava, man, man, he's still he's still doing live shows, man. Yeah, he's he's still doing the circuit there. I want to bring him down to the show, man. Yeah. I remember yeah. that song. Bada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Me and Joel, we we partied one time like hardcore. I'm surprised we were alive the next day. <laughs> I'm oh serious, bro. It was back in the day in his tour bus, dude. Wow. We came from like from Dallas or Austin. I don't know, but it was. I think they were playing in Dallas at the. Um, it's at that big old festival they have over there in Dallas at the Fair Park or something like oh, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm the, sure the hometown boys played that too, man. Back in prob- the day, they probably did. Pero no hombre, bro, Joel Nava, man. So you originally, you were born there in Victoria. I was born in Bay City. I grew up in Victoria. Bay City, is that by, because there's, oh, it's not Baytown and Bay City. So yeah. there's two different Bay. Yeah, yeah Bay, Bay, C- Bay City is like two hours uh, south, southwest, southeast of Houston. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's where I, I was uh, I was born there. went to elementary school there, and then my, my parents moved and uh, to Victoria, and my dad for work and stuff. Yeah. So that's were you playing, like, did you start playing accordion when you were a little kid in elementary, or how old were you when yeah. you started getting into that? I was 12. I was 12 years old. And what got you into that? Was uh, your parents, your family, uh, did you have musicians in the family or something? Because you have a very, very amazing style of playing, man. It's like nonstop, bro, Thank through you. the whole song. <laughs> Most of the conjunto songs, they'll do a little accordion, and then they'll stop and sing, and then they'll bring it back. Right. But you're running it all through the whole song, dude, <laughs> th- and through the whole night. And it's yeah. awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I there's no musicians in my family. Uh it's just I would go stay the summers with my grandparents in Bay City, and they were always listening to to conjunto music, you mm-hmm. know, like Nicky Snick and and uh, Dos Hibertos and of course Hometown, and uh, so that's what I grew up listening to. Oh, what I love. and uh, I just I loved it. And uh, my parents bought me a little toy piano accordion at a flea market, which I still have. Oh, wow. Um, wow, dude, that's awesome, yeah, man! They bought it for me at a flea market, and I I was learning songs on it, mm-hmm. and. Uh, my dad would be, hey, show your grandpa, show your popo, you know how to play. Uh-huh. So I would play the songs, and I caught him on a good day. He was drinking a little bit, and he was like, you want a real one? I was like, of course. You know, I wasn't going to say no. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, he was like, call the local music store, see if they got one. So I called. They had one. I said, popo, oh, they got an accordion. Oh, he was like, okay, let's go get it. He, he, he took me there. He bought it. And he was like, okay, now I bought it. Now you got to learn it. And that's all you do now, right? Is that is that all you do, or do you do something else besides music? No, I, I'm a real estate agent. Orale. Oh, feria. Corazón anda en una trocona, carnal. Cállate la boca, shut up. El relojón que trae. Watch el relojote que trae. Casi no, ca- uh, no cabía no. la troca en mi driveway, carnal. Cállate la boca, shut up. Tuve que mover mi Nissan Versa. <laughs> <laughs> Se parqueó arriba la Nissan Versa. La troca y oh, But you know, it's a funny oh thing how I even got into real estate though cuz I've only been doing it 4 years, right? Mm-hmm. So I was with Hometown when I started real estate, you know, cuz uh, I just needed something to do. There was only so much Call of Duty I could play during the week and I was <laughs> like, you know, I need I need to do something else. So, uh Lewis, which is the ball player, uh, he was like, hey, man, have you thought about getting into real estate? You know, you could still play music. You could be gone on the weekends. You're your own boss. You know, you make your own schedule. And I was See. like, oh, well, let me look into it. I took the courses. I passed. And I just started doing it. And, and now I love it, you know. Um, How is it, the housing market right now? I mean, because they're, you know, they say the economy and, uh, you know, that the housing uh, market's going to collapse. The construction, uh, you know, with inflation. And uh, there's certain things that are that they're predicting because I keep up with all that shit. Yeah, and that's yeah. why, you know, that's why tonight's election is so important, you know, because, you know, some people aren't making the right decisions uh, to help, uh, you know, our economy and the, the, the hardworking middle class folks and shit. Yeah. yeah. So w- what is, what's it like? Uh, so, I mean, for sure, two years ago, you were doing great, right? Oh, yeah. 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 You yeah. Know? When I first started, I, I did really good. And then so how is it now? Right now, it's a little slow. See? Uh, because the interest rates are going up, right? Yeah. So right now, interest rates, they just went up again. So we're looking pretty close to like maybe 7% uh-huh. interest rate, which is, it's higher than what it was, but it's not like it was, you know. It, it's been there before. Yeah, it's been worse, yeah. way worse. 
Um, but what I, I've been telling people is that, you know, if you're a buyer, now's the best time to take advantage because sellers now, you know, a few months ago, sellers were, they were raking it in, mm -hmm. you know, there was multiple offers. People were going into bidding wars and now uh, you can negotiate right now. Sellers are, are helping people with closing costs yeah. and they're, they're bringing down the prices. So, you know, if you're a buyer, buy now mm -hmm. when the interest rates go down, refinance and you win. That's you know? what they were they were telling my daughter because she's looking at buying a house and stuff. And uh, and she was saying that because I, I worry about her, you know, because oh, she's getting into something big and, you know, and, and I'm very proud of her and everything. And but then I worry because, you know, how is it going to be next year? Job security, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. More for her than for me. You know what I mean? And uh and she mentioned that, that her friend told her, you know what, you can get it at this percentage, and then when it lowers down, you can refinance and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's ways to get around it later on down the road, right? Yeah, yeah, because there's builders right now. I know a builder that's offering almost 20000 in closing costs. Wow. And, uh, I mean, if this was a few months ago, you would have never even heard of that. You would have laughed at that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. So right now, if you're a buyer take advantage of and it. interest rates are supposed to go up more i mean they're they're, they're gonna pick them up a little more before the end of the year i think two more times or something so yeah. i you know like i keep up with all that because, yeah yeah you know. it's gonna continue to go up but if you're if you're waiting and you think it's gonna go back down to like three percent or you know even lower than that it's not gonna happen did you vote already uh no no i, I have not you didn't vote no, no, no what no. happened bro god <laughs> you know to be honest with you i'm not uh, i've never been a voter no no i've never i you know i don't even i don't really don't pay attention to the news or tv or anything like Politics. that so i don't i don't even know who i'd vote for so you're lacking any stress at all right <laughs> yeah, yeah I, just, I just roll no, with the, roll no the punches anything, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah what about you Jax? did you vote Sing, uh, no, yes. not yet. I was gonna vote <laughs> well, today. You can't and vote then, anymore. It's over. Oh, today. It? No, not yet. It's over, dude. <laughs> oh, it's, it's over. Oh no, I've been really busy editing and stuff. Like, I edit. You can edit in line while you're waiting to vote. It's because the thing is, I, I get su I get submerged in my work. Like, I I edit the the Jacks. Uh, world videos on my phone when I'm the pooper and then I and then when I'm done with that like I come back to my laptop and then I'm editing the weddings and like the shows that I that I record so all day like like people don't know this but when you're a photographer videographer all your there's day, no you're excuse editing. jacks there's no you could have been editing there in line when oh you're voting God. bro man well I mean I thought there was gonna be like another day where we could go like because it was early voting right because like they had said like early voting and then they said like there was one day when it was the last day. That was today. Hey, you know what? Us Hispanics, when anything that says early on it, we're not doing. You know yeah, what I, I mean? No, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I'll go later. Like, I'll just go on the actual early day. Early voting shit. I don't wake up till three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, bro. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, you know. That's what happens, you know. A lot of people don't vote. Yeah. And some people don't believe in the election system and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that, bro. They they're kind of like, um, you know, they they just don't don't have faith. Now, fíjate yeah, yeah. que I do believe in it. I do believe that you do make a difference. You know, like every vote means means something. But I honestly thought I still had time. Like I didn't even know today was the last day. I was so submerged <laughs> in my work that I had no idea. You know. No, Pedro, we'll have another election in two years. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Get ready. Oh, my God. Start I doing push-ups and jumping jacks and shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to start watching the news. <laughs> <laughs> you caught up. Hey, and next, and next election cycle, which is, uh, you know, the 20, 2025, right? 2024? 2024. 2024. Uh, it's uh, supposedly Trump is going to say, you know, he's going to run for president again next Tuesday. So, oh shit! So it's like they're gonna announce it. I that, thought, well, that's what he said last night in an Ohio uh, rally. Oh. He said uh, next Tuesday I will be making a very, very big announcement from Mar-a-Lago, and that's when all the rallies start and like you know, like all that no, campaigning, right? All it's of like this campaigning. madre on the news and shit, well, bro. Of course, that I mean. I mean, they're trying to obliterate him. They're trying to destroy him, you know, but I know, bro. it's impossible. You can't destroy an unstoppable, an unstoppable force. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> the government is an unstoppable force, dude. If they're going after you, they're going after yeah. you, and you're going to end up at the short end of the stick. Yeah, you know, that's true. Most that's of the true. time. So Don't fuck with America. But the only thing that's helping him is that he's got president, 
you know, and if they do that to a president or whatever they do, then all the presidents coming up near in the near future are game. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So there has to be that certain line que, hey, esta línea no cruzas, carnal. You know, es el presidente, bro, porque si le cae al presidente este, entonces le vamos a poder a caer a todos los presidentes, ¿me entiendes? So, but, you know, but then again, they're all in the same clique and they're all against one, you know. I mean, you know, bro, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy. una pinche novela bruta. Big time. <laughs> well, I should definitely start watching the news. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use this opportunity to, to post myself for the 2024 election. Uh, right now, <laughs> Jax for 2024 president of the United States, baby. Que pajo. You're going to be my first vote ever. <laughs> For you, man. Because <laughs> everybody in the chat zone is already saying Jax 2024. Uh, hey, hey, Fernando Ambriz, thank you. Thank you for yeah, your support. The only thing is Jax won't show up to vote for himself, man. He's not even chingado, vato. Votar bien chato en la troca editing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, uh, big show. So, uh, 12 years old, you get an accordion, you start playing. And in high school, did you join any bands and stuff locally there? Yeah. So, I got my accordion during the summer uh, by the... By the summer, that following summer, I was already in a band. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started playing locally, you know, the Church Jamaicas and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just kept, it just became a passion. You, you know? caught on. I mean, you you just had that God-given talent, bro. Yes. I it, mean, not any 12-year-old can get in there and just <laughs> start doing it, man. I mean, it's pretty pretty crazy bro yeah it, i dedicated a lot of time to it well, did you I mean, uh did you take lessons did you uh, go to a, I, I was going to a guy for a little bit um were you in band in school yes oh that yes, is. so you in, learned all that the theory and all that yeah stuff. yeah, yeah. Orale. so I, I was going to a guy at a plaza though for a little bit but it, it just my spanish sucks you know mm -hmm. so all that man spoke was spanish so it just i the communication wasn't there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my dad stopped taking me, but I was I was a guy that I could just turn on the radio and, and I, I'd pick it up. Uh-huh, you know, by uh, ear. Yeah, that's how I was doing it. Yeah. So, uh, again, man, I wouldn't go out with my friends. I would just, as soon as go home from school, boom, accordion. And mm -hmm. then I would fall asleep with it. And, you know, my mom yelling from the kitchen, Anthony, shut the door and all this stuff. Because, I, I mean, I was just constantly just grinding you should have said mom you're lucky i'm not playing drums <laughs> right? yeah. i know yeah. right i know yeah, yeah. It, uh, man that's that's pretty awesome man and so you uh, graduated out of victoria high school yeah yeah i graduated uh in 99 out of stroman high school what kind of uh what kind of school kid were you man were you a straight a honor roll no not no uh, i wish i was were uh, you uh, omniscient or what was it yeah <laughs> no, <I'm omniscient>. no, <laughs> what the hell? that's the wrong word what i'm trying that? to i'm trying to talk smart here I, I think i know what you're trying to say but uh yeah i would i got in trouble for truancy and all that stuff oh, I, would, I would leave the school and uh it's because it was boring for you, bro. It was very boring. Yeah. Uh, you got a musician mind. <laughs> yeah. Musician yeah. minds are hard to keep in class. Yeah. I know. And to keep their, their attention. It was, it's got to have something to do with tapping, uh, you know, something, music, something. It's got to, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting because I had the same problem. And a lot of kids do. And they call it ADHD. <laughs> they they mm -hmm. would have been, you know what? If you were in school today, they'd be giving you pills, bro. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? And they didn't. You didn't get any meds when you were in school, right? Because no. you were, you know, struggling no. or anything like that? No. No, that wasn't that wasn't heard of till just recently, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know, sometimes I think what, what would have, I mean, you know, if they give you the meds and then it stumps, it stunts the growth of your creativity, maybe, you know? Maybe yeah, that's what I probably do. wouldn't be where I'm at, maybe. Uh, that's what, know? and I told my wife the exact same thing about me, dude. You know what I mean? Because in school, I just couldn't handle it. I, I. I yeah. was looking out the window thinking of what's going on out in the real world. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, all I was thinking about was music all the time. Yeah. And luckily, Stroman, you know, this is probably pretty bad to say, but the teachers there, they had like this a different type of attitude towards us. Like when it came for exams and everything, the teachers would write the answers on the board mm -hmm. and they would just say, don't use those answers. It's just a guideline. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that was almost all the classes. They wrote the answers on the board. Yeah. So I, it was easy to pass. They didn't want to have oh, you wow. two years in a row, man. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. We can't have this guy two years in a row. Give him the answers. I don't want him here again. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But it was, it, was, it was fun. So though. you got out. You graduated. What did you do as soon as you graduated out of high school? I tried like hell to be a, a full-time musician. Uh-huh. And I failed. 
greatly. <laughs> How, in what way? Um, what happened? It, it, uh, I just, you know, you're, you're, you have this vision of what you see, you know, and I was so young and, uh, you know, my first show I got to see was uh, Jaime. The Anda. No yeah. hombre, and, uh, you know, just seeing him and that, that's all my focus was. That's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And not, not to mention, ap- right after I graduated that August, I, I got married. So, um, and what made you get married so young? Was she pregnant or no, you, no, okay. no, 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 you know, that happens most of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, straight out of high yeah, school, yeah. you know, you know, that happens. It's no, 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 it, it just, it's just something you that just we did. Bien pelotado, ya madre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was a struggle, uh, you know, uh, she was the one working. I was trying to do the music thing and, you know, there was times when just no electricity, we're eating tuna out of a can and, wow. you know, we're, you know, but then. You know, you got to face the the real world, mm-hmm. uh, real world, and I ended up getting a job, and uh, but still, music I could not. What was your job? What was the job you got? Uh, what was I doing then? Um, I think I tried Schlotsky's. Okay, that didn't last. They're making one, babe, over here on Twenty Third and Nolana. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Those sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Are, I haven't eaten there in a long time, but they're, they're good. I like them. We used to call it Slutsky's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so you were you know you were doing the uh, fast food and uh, yeah, whatever yeah. job you could get just to make some money yeah some yeah, men's yeah. Meat. yeah yeah and then um and the band that you were playing with that there was they weren't gigging or what or um, was it working out no it really i mean it wasn't enough to survive that's uh-huh. for sure uh, yeah whatever i was making yeah but you know it's it's all you know life lessons what year are we talking about here man about uh, 1995 96 no, it was probably like around 2000. Okay. Like around 2000. So you graduated from high school about 98, 99? So 99. 99? 99, okay. I graduated. Okay, so nine, and you were 18 in 99. You were 28 yeah. in 2009. You were 38 in 2019. So you're almost about 41, 42, somewhere around there? Yeah, I'm 42. You is mathematics, yo. My man. I didn't even use my fingers to count, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh man. So... God. So you were seeing Jaime Dianda after Juan P. Moreno and uh, yeah, Roel and was already in the yeah, band. Roel was in the band. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't the original guys from no. the late, late eight. Oh man, that no. band was amazing. Bro. Yeah, I mean uh, Manuel on drums, dude. Uh, I mean, have you heard some of their older stuff? Yeah, Que le vas a dar? You know oh, that yeah, album for sure. Yeah, the, the the album where they're all like in uh, British nights, British nights and, and they're in from the carnival. The carnival. <laughs> What a classic yeah. picture, dude! That yeah. one, right? I know it, it was so awesome, man. It, you know, those, that's the stuff that I, I would listen to whenever I first started learning how to play. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it's so weird now that you know to be on stage with Hyman and, and we chatted up like you know, yeah. like nothing. You know, and these are guys that I idolize. You know, yeah. Um, but no, it, it was a fun ride, man. Like just uh, all the lessons that I've learned, and then you know. Um, I ended up, uh, you know, the marriage didn't work out. I got divorced, whatever. Uh huh. And then, uh, you know, I was with Hometown. Uh, when did you join Hometown Boys? I think that was in 09. I th- I think were you the, the one that joined right after their brother Joe died? Or were, no. were you there? Were you like the second or third one after that? I was like that? the third one after that. I, okay. I got in when uh, Steven got out. Okay. After Ricky passed away. Joe was just one of the most amazing accordion players. I mean, even today, I listen to his solo stuff, and I'm like, bro. He's the one on on the pedestal for me. Uh, Joe is my idol, man. I would listen to him, and uh, as I'm listening, I'm studying everything he's doing. I can tell when he's pulling in, pulling out, Uh pushing, you know, whatever he's doing. The timing, bro. And uh, that's just, that style stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's... I love it. I Not love many it. have that style that I've heard. I mean, you know that uh, that have made you know made it a signature. You know, right. like um, you know um, Joe Martinez from Hometown Boys, one of them. You're the other guy that's doing it now. And then there's another guy named Rodney with Los Cucuis. He used to uh, play with uh, Los Fantasmas. Oh yeah, Rodney. And, and that conjunto is like they he's constantly he, he's playing constantly through moving. the whole song. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's there's accordion through the whole song. It doesn't stop singing, stop singing like Dos Gilbertos and stuff like that. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's a different style, man. It's a signature style that uh, not many do, right? Yeah, it, it's a constant. I mean, everybody has their how they play, and there there are a lot of accordion players that that'll play constantly through it. And, you know the songs and stuff but um it's just uh, it's just the the way the progressions work and the 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 you know the the runs that joe did and stuff like that and yeah. it was just 
This sounds so awesome. I know, bro. And I never got to see Joe live. What's the secret to the hometown boys? What's this? I mean, the father, how old is he? He's like 90 years old now and he's still on the road, right? Or are they still playing? Uh, yeah, I guess they're still playing. Honestly, I haven't uh, been in contact with them, but uh, I don't know what their, their secret was. They just had a, they were a powerhouse, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys, they. Was it the timing, the compas? I, it just, that had a lot to do with it. Their drive. They had a different yeah, drive. You the know? drive, dude. They 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 were just a man. They were a force, dude. Yeah. And then the songs that they chose to record and how they and did how them. they did them. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Man. I mean, they're all classics. And when you joined the hometown boys, how did that happen? I mean, did they see you playing somewhere, or had they heard about you? Yeah. Or, you know, were you playing with somebody else then and then they called you up or what happened there? Yeah, I was. Uh, well, so prior before I really got to start hanging out with them, um, this is when uh, Leo Aguilera was the accordion player. He was going to get out mm -hmm. and they were playing at a place in Victoria called Mario's Ballroom. So I went, I drove by there because I, I had heard he was getting out. Yeah. So I was like 15 at the time. Damn. So I drive up and there's Ricky right there. And so I, I roll up and I, I roll down the window and I'm like, hey, Ricky. And he turns around and he's like, hey, Miguel, how you doing? And I, I was talking to him and I was like, hey, I heard you're going to be looking for an accordion player. I'd love the opportunity to, to try out. And he just looks at me and he's like, how old are you? I was like, I'm 15. He goes, oh, no, Miguel, you better stay in school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, well, I appreciate it anyway. And that's the way it stayed. That's the best, uh, you know, um, advice I think he could have given you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, he, he knows that you don't know how rough this business is. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. You didn't know then, you know. And it was weird because, okay, so after that, uh, Steven was the recording player. So whenever they would play in Victoria, um, at uh, they played at a, it was a place called uh, Roberto's. And uh, so I would go and they would call me up there. And uh, I was I would play with Ricky and, and Steven and, and I think uh, Johnny Johnny Hernandez was on drums. Oh yeah, Johnny! So, what a what a kind soul that guy oh, is. Yeah, man. Man. He, thought, mighty. He's he's a great guy. So you know I would they would I would sit in with him, and uh, that even happened in Houston a few times. And and uh, so whenever Ricky passed away and Steven got out, uh, since I had already played with them, they heard me play, and uh, I was the guy that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. So Bobby. Got a hold of a, a buddy of mine in Victoria. Said, "Hey, I'm I'm looking for Anthony. Can you give me his number?" Bobby is the bass player that was managing the hometown boys when uh, when when Ricky passed away, right? Yeah, yeah. Ricky. And, uh, and and yeah, I remember him. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. Bobby. So is he still around? Do you know? Uh, he is. Uh, he's in a in a rehab right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it rehab as far as drugs, alcohol, or no, is it uh, something he, else? He was in an accident. Oh no, man! What happened to him? Okay, so um, he was uh, driving in Houston because uh, that's where he was he was living, and I think he was just running some errands. And uh, while he was on the the freeway, he had a stroke. Oh no! And uh, he he veered off. He hit a barrier and flipped his truck. And it, damn, it so was is, bad. is he pretty? He's pretty bad. He's he, he's lucky to be alive. Wow, dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I need to I need to research uh, where he's at and all that, man. I mean, uh, yeah, no, something, bro. Definitely. Uh, I didn't even know that had happened to him. You know, I've been out of the scene for a little while. When I started doing the show again, that's when I started, you know, kind of mm. keeping up with stuff. Yeah. Uh, in the Tejano industry and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I've been in rock radio for about 10, 11 years already. Yeah. And so, but, uh, you know, I never let go of my roots, you know, my Tejano mm. and all that stuff, you know. Well, as we get further down the story, you'll, you'll, You'll find out how this band started. Orale. So, so you, Bobby was looking for you. Yeah, Bobby was looking for me. Um, so the guy uh, that was that he called, his name was Johnny Padierna. He's a, he ran sound at Grupo Poder mm -hmm. in Victoria. So Johnny calls me and uh, he was like, "Hey, uh, he always called me Killer. Hey, Killer, um, Bobby's looking for you." I was like, "Bobby, Bobby who?" He's like, "Bobby from Hometown Boys Killer." And I was like, "Oh, okay." He was like, "Is it okay if I give him your number?" Like, yeah, give him my number. Then I had a, I was in a band called Grupo Invicto, which it was it was, I guess my band I guess, uh, and uh, so that whole conversation took place with Bobby. Uh, I was like, man, I have my band, you know, I'm, I'd be willing to help you guys out for a while, you know. And he was like, okay, well, I'm really looking for somebody permanent, and I was like, well, let's try it out, let's see how it goes. Well, you know, we'll go from there. So I ended up my first show with them was in Dallas at New West, 
and uh, did the show. Uh, it went well. They offered me the position, and uh, the, the rest was history. And then you didn't you didn't see home for a while. Huh? I mean, you were on the road constantly, right? Yeah, it was it was constant. It was were constant. the hometown boys were they um were they basically just Texas or did you do a lot of uh, road trips out of state? No, we were going out of state. We did California, Chicago, uh, and where else did we go? The Midwest. We, we, we were How were those days for you, man? How huh? what's your What's your fondest memories of being on the road in California and Arizona and all those areas? Just the experiences, man. Uh, especially when we I did the, the first show in Monterrey. Mm-hmm. Man, that, that was epic. You know, it was just... Thousands was, of people. It, yeah, it's totally different there. Yeah. You know, and even then, you know, when Ricky passed away, it was a rebuilding thing. So people, when they would come see us, they really didn't know what to expect. Yeah. You know, but... Luckily, all the shows went well. and But they knew you all were going to stick to the tradition, you know, stick to the style. Right. Yeah. And uh, and it was, I mean, the the discography and the, the, the right. music, I mean, so many songs, right? Yeah. And then the style that I had, it was, I mean, I idolized Joe. So it was, it was like a, a perfect fit. You mm-hmm. know, there wasn't anything really missing other than, you know, maybe the, the segundas and the vocals. How many people were in Monterrey? Because... For some reason, uh, they uh, they really embrace the conjunto stuff over there, right? Yeah, they do. It, I couldn't tell you how many people exactly, but it was it was a shitload, thousands, man. Yeah, it was a lot. Damn, was a lot. bro. Did you have a cell phone back then? Uh, Were there cell phones or no? Yeah, yeah. I think I did. To have take a cell those phone selfies back. with the crowd and uh, all that. Oh yeah, but then the, the, those pictures sucked. Pinche <laughs> 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 flip phone camera, I don't know, know madre they suck, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow, man. So then you were with uh, you. You started with the hometown boys about two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, and you stuck with them through the what a decade, something like that. Yeah, or? yeah. I was with them a little over a decade. Uh, man, I, I want to say. Uh, I think I was with them for like maybe um, close to 12 years. Mm-hmm. So maybe I was with them maybe like back in 08 or something like that. But, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with them. Uh, when was the last year you were with them? Uh, 2019. 2019. And uh, had it just ran its course or did you think, no. you know what, I need to do something on my own. It's about time I ran. I, I guide my own ship. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, what what, what was the, what, what came down? No. So, okay. So. Before Bobby had gotten in the accident, uh, there was a conversation that took place, right? Between Rosie, which is Bobby's sister. The one that was singing with Ricky on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Roman, which is her dad. Okay. Well, uh, Roman, I guess, had told Rosie at some point that whenever he passed away, that was going to be it. There was going to be no more hometown boys. Like I he would was, imagine. He right? was taking the name with him. So she goes and, and she tells Bobby and Bobby's like, well, what the hell are we supposed to do? You know, this is, I mean, we're doing this too. You know, I, we're, this is all I do. What am I going to do? So Bobby, you know, that was always on his mind. You know, he would bring it up from time to time. And finally he was, one day he just asked me, he was like, hey, if I, if I do my own thing, you going to come with me? I was like, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll do it. Let's, I'm with you. Let's do it. Well, fast forward, you know, maybe a few months, uh, several months actually. And uh, Bobby had the accident. Wow. So that's really, really, uh, what, what craziness, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, for that exactly. to happen right when you were in the transition period of, you know, yeah. s- starting to do something on your own aside from the hometown boys. Yeah. 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 And you know, the, the biggest thing was with Bobby was tr- trying and, and how to get it started, how to do it, you know, mm-hmm. but we hadn't really gotten to that stage. And Bobby had the booking skills, right? I mean, he's yeah. a booker, he's a he's management, he'll like, right. He was handling all that, right? Yeah, He was handling all that. So that would have been the one doing it for you guys. Yeah. So, um, once Bobby got out or not got out, but got in the accident, um, Roman's wife started managing the band. And then that's when, you know, everything kind of went downhill for me. Mm-hmm. Um, in what way or what? I, they, um, it was just a, it seemed like it was always um, just a constant battle for some reason. It, it almost felt like a power trip or something. A battle for what? Uh, um, say so. Say so. In a, in a sense that I, because I was so close to Bobby and I knew everything that was going on, you know, I would try to help them, but it, it, they just, they didn't like that. No, they wanted to do their own. Uh, they wanted to do their own thing. They had their, their own way of doing it. Now. Yeah. It's a different, yeah. different onda. Yeah. 
And um, so, you know, it's it was a bu- it's a bunch of shit to be honest with you. More stuff than I'd really like to talk about, but um, you know, some of it even involved my my wife, and it, it's it's just drama, crazy, drama, crazy shit. Yeah. And uh, so finally, they were like, you know what, uh, you know, we're gonna let you go. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, are are you sure that's what you want to do? And uh, they were like, yeah. And uh, were you ready? I wasn't ready, but I knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's weird because before that I had just started real estate. So yeah. thank God, you know, I got into real estate because then I, you know, I would have been screwed. Did you feel like when that accident happened to Bobby that you know eventually, yeah, this was going to last much longer? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, and that's what I was trying to trying to stop. Because I could see how things were being done and it was just being done very wrong in a sense that, you know, of how you treat people and how you talk to people, Mm -hmm. you know, um, one thing for sure is you you just, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. And and that's even from a management side, the way you talk to the people that book you Mm -hmm. and and treat them, you know, you, you just don't do that. And that's what I would try to tell them. Because Roman's wife was the one doing all the talking. Professionalism? Is that what you're talking about? Like, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it just, and they didn't like that. I was the, I was that guy that, that spoke up, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just like, and finally Roman was just like, you know, I'm tired of arguing. And I, I remember the conversation in the hotel room, uh, the night that they were like, Hey, just give me two more weeks. And I turned around and I looked at Rosie and I'm like, Rosie, you're not going to say nothing. You know, I mean, this is it. And she she didn't say anything, so I was like, okay. Well, you were unhappy there anyway, bro. I mean, um, right? I, I, mean, I was, but you know, it, it's crazy because like I'm still a fan of the hometown boys. Well, you, you know, what yeah, I mean? the, that's besides the point. I mean, of course you're a fan, man. The music's yeah, great, yeah. and you had a great run with them. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have any regrets at all. No, but, no, you know, I, I it don't. kind of ended up a little messy. Yeah. But still, that bond is there, and you've left your mark there and your legacy, man, with the music as well, and with your accordion playing, bro. Yeah. So once I got out, I was, you know, really just going to hang it up, really just concentrate on, on real estate full time. No um, way, dude. <laughs> you were fooling yourself, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's no way a musician with your talent. <laughs> to, right? He, he, yeah. was, he was just saying that so people will say, no, don't hang him up, no. bro. No, Don't I, hang no, him no. up, bro. You're great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which, no. you know, is okay. I mean, they, they kind of like, because when something like that happens, it kind of screws with your confidence and all you kind of like, where am I today? Why yeah, yeah, am yeah, I yeah. at this point? You start questioning yourself. Yeah. And then you're thinking, maybe God wants me to do something else. But at the end of the day, God gave you that talent you have, yeah. bro. <laughs> and he doesn't want you to squander it, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, Lewis, me, Lewis, which is a bajo player, uh, we, we kept in contact with Bobby. You know, mm-hmm. uh, actually, Lewis sees Bobby more than, than I do. He goes to visit him in the rehab, and he was there recently. But uh, one time we went, and Bobby was like, hey, uh, are you still going to start the band? And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah. So you should do it. He was like, I'm going to be back. I can do, I'll manage. But, and so that conversation just stayed like that. And me and Lewis, we talked about it. And I was just like, man, I don't know if that's something that we should do. You know, because uh, what I was afraid of was like this huge backlash, right? Uh, but we we decided, you know what, let's just do it. You know, if Bobby able to come back, he'll do bookings. You know, he'll, we'll, we'll be good. Mm-hmm. Well, so we started. We came up with the, the name South Texas Homies. Uh, before you, before we get into South Texas, so is Bobby? Is he incapacitated in some way or what? Or because he can speak? I mean, he, he, can, he you can, guys can communicate. Yeah, he can speak. He just can't walk. He can't walk. He, he's a paralyzed from uh, I think on his right side of his body. On his right side of his body. But yeah. he, so has he been able to you know therapy you know go through therapy and learn how to write with his left and do all the things with his left? I honestly don't know what his uh, therapy. Uh uh-huh. sessions are like or but has like he that. improved since this happened or anything uh, like that he, he's improved a little bit mm-hmm. uh from what from what i can tell like i said lewis is the one that that sees him a lot more than i do yeah um but you know i'll talk to him on the phone uh you know i think the medications that he's on uh every once in a while you know he, he gets a little loopy 
But, yeah. You know. Well, you know, when you talk to him again, you tell him I said hello, and, and I'm, I'm praying for him to get better. And you I know, will. I will. And hopefully one day he'll be uh, jumping on stage with you guys again. I know, right? That'd yeah. Be, uh, that'd be awesome. So South Texas Homies, who came up with that name? Uh, uh, we we tried to keep it tied because Bobby was going to be a part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, so it's just the name we came up with. Like South Texas homies, you know, it's, I like it's, it. It's different. It's got know? a great freaking ring. Dude. <laughs> yeah. And so we started it uh, and everything that I thought was going to happen. It was a complete opposite. Like there was uh, if there was any backlash, it was more from, uh, you know, family members of the Martinez's, you know, stuff like that. But everything else, it was just this huge tidal wave of support. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was crazy. And, you know, we started gigging um, our first uh, year out. Our calendar was full. And then uh, COVID I can came. imagine, bro. Yeah. And then COVID came. Ugh. And uh, so that put a halt to everything. But then we recorded, uh, which is uh, the album that you're, you're playing in the background now. It, it's time. Um, we, we were nominated for a Latin Grammy. Ooh. Um, you know, we just kind of hit the floor running. It, it was crazy how, mm. how everything worked out. And like you said, I mean, it's kind of like a a blessing in disguise how everything has happened and transitioned. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. How like it, it at the when you get to a certain point, you're like, okay, now I understand why. Yeah. You know, I understand why this happened and why it, it's all, it's God's plan, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. And now you, you know, you do what you love to do, play music. And you also get to do the real estate thing, bro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, what else could you ask for? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you're yeah. playing the music you love to play. Put on that picture of the band on stage. Uh, I mean, uh, the band on the TV, babe. Because I want um, I want Big Show this to one? tell me who who is who. Right? So the guy on the very left, who's that? That That is Alejandro Elias. He plays bass. Okay. And then the next guy? Uh, that's Javier Torres. He's a drummer. Wait, oh, Alejandro, where is he from? Houston. Okay, and then the next guy, what was his name again? Uh, Javier Torres. He's hey. out of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi, okay. And then the, the middle? The middle, that's Luis uh, Flores. He plays bajo. Okay, and then uh, that's, that's you? That's me. And then the guy next to you? Right next to me is uh, Andrew Rodriguez. He's out of Dallas. And he's a singer? He's a singer. Bro, tajeras ya para cantar, bro. Man, le- dude, you know, like we were saying, blessing in disguise and how everything <laughs> has happened. So yeah. uh, back when I had my group, uh, Invicto, uh, he had a band, Ambition, out of Dallas. Mm-hmm. And we'd do these shows out in Ohio and, you know, together. And, you know, uh, we were just jamming together. Well, when I joined Hometown, uh, he keeps in touch, man. He he'll call me, he would call me like once every few months or something. And every time he'd call me, I'd pick up the phone and be like, hello. And he'd just start singing. And mind <laughs> you, he's an accordion player. Uh-huh. So, you know, it was crazy that he he did that. Uh, cause I, I'm, I've never been that type of guy. Like I don't re- really reach out to people like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I kind of keep to myself, but mm-hmm. he would call, I'd look at my phone and boom, there Chinga, he is. Este vato otra vez. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, and then I guess he had, and then you'd song. answer it and he'd go, you are the sunshine <laughs> of my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't give him no ideas. <laughs> No, he would call, and he would he would call me singing a hometown boy song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't think of, off the top of my head the name of the song. He would sing uh, "Podría Volver," pero no vuelvo. He, he, that's, he would start with that. About auditioning, yeah, kind of. Yeah, well, at the time I was still with hometown, and there was a time when Marky got sick, and I had called him. I was like, "Hey, man, do you want to come and, and and sing some songs? You know, do a few shows." Marky but, uh, Lee. Yeah, Marky Lee. Yeah, I remember him, man. But he. He was a, a truck driver, you know. He was doing the oil field work. He was mm-hmm. like, "Man, my schedule can't do it." And he was like, "Dude, I, I'm not a singer." I was like, "Dude, I think you can do it." Well, it, it didn't happen. So, when all this started happening, the first person, because when I was thinking of a singer, the first person that I thought of was him, because mm-hmm. he would just call me and you know just start singing. So I called him. I was like, "Hey, dude, uh, putting a, a project together. You, you want to sing?" And it, I, I. I'm trying to remember what his reaction was, but his reaction was just Yo kind of like, un pintor, <laughs> cada vez que pinto, pinto unos ojitos que me hacen llorar. Yeah, dude. And so he was like, I'll try it, you know? And uh, so he drives from Dallas all the way down to the valley. He drives to my house and he has his mom and, 
and uh, in the car and stuff. And uh, he he comes inside by himself. And I was like, hey, man, do you want to invite your family to come inside? He was like, no, 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 they'll, they'll be okay in the car. He was nervous. Uh-huh. So I, so he comes in my, the living room and... <laughs> He's uh, he's sweaty like he's just dripping sweat and uh, he does it he's singing and I'm like man you know as a guy for a guy that's not really a singer you know you can tell when somebody has it it's there it just mm-hmm. you, you know it just needs to be dialed in yeah and uh, I that was my thought with Andrew and uh, like I I believed in him I knew he could do it you know for one he's he's full of heart you know what I mean if that guy puts his mind to something he's gonna do it yeah. And here we are, three years later. Yeah, uh, he's he's doing it. But on that video, babe, uh, where he's singing, I, I love that. It's those songs of the videos that you sent me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He. I mean, he's he's only getting better and better. Man. COVID video, man. That's awesome. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you know, they've got videos. They've got music you can stream. I, I honestly think if you're turning on the barbecue pit and outside and, you know, you just want to hear some great music, you just put South Texas Homie is on shuffle. <laughs> and that's what you got. Yeah. The thing about it is if you're planning to just barbecue and drink till about 11, and you put this music, not happening. it's Forget not going it. to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. It's going to be like 7 a.m. And uh, you're going to be saying, Oye, ya venden a las 7, ¿verdad? <laughs> yeah. Man. Hey, let me tell you, bro, I appreciate you coming to the show, man. Man, uh, you know, like I told you, I was nervous all day about today. <laughs> um, it, it's just because, you know, to me, like so many legendary people have sat in this chair, man. And, and for me to be sitting in here, it's like, wow, you know, it's just. You're a legend too, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yes, no, yeah. dude no, honestly, no. bro, you're the way you've played and, the, and, and who you've played with and. Now you're doing your own thing, bro. I mean, you're leaving your own legacy, bro. You I, know what I mean? Uh, I appreciate that very much. And you've always been a humble dude, too. I mean, <laughs> uh, with me, I mean, I've always, every time we got together, you were always, uh, you know, I had a smile. Yeah. You always uh, were appreciative of everything. And, uh, you know, you, you, Definitely. you, you had a good raise. Uh, you know, your, your parents raised you well, man. For sure. For yeah. Sure. And that's awesome. And now you've got your own band. I mean, and you're, you're, you know, you've got some guys that are, you know, that believe in your, the vision and, oh, and the definitely. music and, uh, and you sound great together. You guys got great chemistry. Thank you. Yeah. That's what, you know, when me and Andrew had the conversations and stuff. He was like, man, outside of everything else, when we're together, whether it's on the studio or on stage, it's, it's like magic. You know, we mm-hmm. just were, we just form like one and, and boom, we're on it. You know what I mean? And I can see it and feel it when I see the videos on uh, TikTok and on Instagram of you guys performing. Yeah. I feel it and I see it. I'm like, these guys got that special thing going, man. You know awesome. what I mean? Yeah. The guys are, are super awesome, man. A shout out to all the guys. If, if you guys are listening, man, uh, 
I mean, they, they work extremely hard when it's time to record and, and uh, travel. Everybody makes their sacrifices. <laughs> and you're all scattered all over Texas, bro. Dude, that's that's probably our biggest drawback because we, we can never rehearse. You know? There's bands around here that never get together, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. ¿Cómo, cómo le hacen para hacer practice? ¿Están todos scattered out? You know? Well, no, watch out the video de COVID. I, I saw that. I mean, I saw that, but like... <laughs> <laughs> well, my my thing is to have that kind of chemistry. You you gotta do it, like, you know, like live in person. But like yeah. they, these guys have like um, an amount of chemistry that even from a device and from far away, they still manage to sound good. That's you know? right. So that's a good thing. And yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, it's like a perfect storm, man. I mean, we we all work so hard, man, and uh, the blessings that that are, are that we've been have that we've had and and that keep coming. You know, it's 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 surreal to be honest with you. Uh, we're surrounded by a lot of uh, very uh, positive people and people that are pushing us. And of course, you know, we have our record label in group, uh, Jorge Marroquin and all the family. As soon as he called me, actually, he was like, hey, uh, when I got well, all that happened with hometown, he was like, hey, you need to do something. You need to start a band and do something. And I was like, nah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Jorge. I'm probably just going to do real estate. Uh, but I'm glad he he stayed, stayed with me. Uh, you know, he's. He's been a great uh, guy to be around, and then now we're we're signed with um, BLG Management. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, we just got so much going on, and it's it's all been just a huge blessing. That's awesome, man! Congratulations, Big Show, man! I appreciate you, and I'm glad you're still in the in the biz and still doing what you're doing and still doing it, what you love to do. And uh, I'm glad Jax intervened uh, there just a bit ago because we've got. Uh, the chat zone with ja cha cha yeah. Jax. God damn, man. What's wrong with oh, And it's oh, loaded so tonight. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so this is brought to you by U.S. Mail and More, your one-stop holiday shipping and mailing outlet. Domestic and international mailing, packaging service, office supplies, postage stamps, key duplicates. Western Union, tienes que mandar una feria, transferar algo. They got money transfers there. Quieres hacer un money order para pagar el child support. Ahí lo puedes hacer también. Así que, you know, that's if you're paying child support on the outside instead of having to go through the attorney general. Pero en el money order vale más que le pongas for child support porque si no te, te lleva para corte y el judge va a decir que it was a gift, ¿me entiendes? Pero no, si dice ahí child support, hey, it's child support. Yikes. Notary Public, <laughs> copies and fax service, mailbox rental. Look at all the mailboxes they got. Two locations in McAllen, 2403 North 10th Street, Suite B at La Vista Square, and then uh, 1001 South 10th Street at McAllen, Texas, también. It's Tiffany Shopping Plaza. Call them for more information and questions, 956-631-0378. Mario's there. He's been, uh, man, he's had that business for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've been going there forever. U.S. Mail and more. Your one-stop holiday shipping and mailing outlet. You go there. They've got everything you need to ship and to pa ba package, box, and mail out. And, you know, Christmas is coming around the corner. You're going to want to be sending out some gifts. They will do it for you. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Mario. U.S. Mail and more. So que dice Jack? Que dice toda la raza en el chat zone, papa? No, pues first off, I just want to say that, man, I wish I would have known about them back when I was sending paquetes up north. But bueno, anyways, <laughs> uh, first off, I want to give a shout out to my mom and my sister hey, that are watching live. My hello. mom, Aurora, and my sister, Sylvia, that had a baby, uh, oh, Julieta. Yay. I that saw that watching. on social media, bro. I, oh. I bought her her first pair of sneakers. I saw of that, dude. Nike. Yeah. You know I love sneakers. And so, you said you were gonna buy them from here on in. From here on, uh, yeah. like I'm a chingue, like I'm gonna have to buy her sneakers for, for life, <laughs> and, 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 and I'll gladly do it because she's my princess. So shout out to them. And my sister said that if you could please do your signature line, asusta me one time. Asusta me one time, papa. Oh. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna oh give a God. shout out to all the people that I have been hey, watching tonight. Speaking of, check uh -oh. out the shirt I gave Big Show. Oh man, uh -oh. I, he gave me hey, one. What size are they? Four XL. I keep it one, papa. The biggest, that's the biggest hashtag PVT fan right there, baby. Right here, brother. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, man. Big show, baby. Te la van a querer quitar, big show. Oh, man, it's mine. All right, y'all. So I'm going to give y'all a quick shout out, but like, it's a lot of you. So I'm going to take a quick hit right now. My man. 
Rick Alanis, Warner Robbins, Georgia, Esmeralda Montalvo from Rosenberg, Delma Munoz from Adrian, Michigan, Navarro Family, shout out to you, Michael Lita from Alice and Hector Gallegos, Big D, Noe Garza, George Perez, Mrs. H RGB Family in Brownsville, Felipe Menchaca from Piedra Redonda, Oscar Perez, San Antonio, Marcos Flores, Arnaldo Valdez, Grito, uh, uh, he saw you at the Grito Fest, Baytown, he said you got down, oh, Steven right. Flores, dice, que dice Whiskey D, papa, Dimas Esteves, lávate la manos oh yeah ramiro maldonado jr dice i used to know band the, Invict, uh, the invicto band they were great esmeralda montalvo says esmeralda montalvo says from the montalvo family says hi laura is watching from ohio saludos laura alejandra valdez says uh and, and felipe menchaca i hope your teenager gets well i know yes. you guys are in the er Stay safe. so uh prayers sent to you guys um brian dc for life says el campo texas saludos sound the house is vegas bound i hope your back feels better bro y échate unos toquecitos para que te sientas con madre. Silvia and my mom, uh, saludos to her, them. I already said that. Uh, Jerry Rodriguez says, uh, hello from Alvin, Texas. He saw you opening for Signal. Jonathan Ibarra, saludos. Eli DK, and shout out to all military personnel and combat vets. Saludos. And he will be here in the show. Lisa R, saludos. Raul Lozada, Gabi Ibarra, Jessica Marie, wow. Juan Hernandez, Digital hey. Sounds, and... Steve Hernandez says he played with you in Grupo Invicto. <gasps> nice. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. If you hear me. Shout Man. out to Shout all out of to you guys. Wife. Thank you for watching the show. Isn't that amazing, Big Show? All the people watching and yeah, listening and checking out the show, man, yeah. live. I'm sorry it's so boring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they loved it. They loved it. Dude, uh, it, it's not boring at oh, all, bro. Okay, it's okay. been, you know, you got you got the master interviewer it's here. It's because of the, the liquid animal, right? Oh, they really like you were, you were sending a shout out to who right now? My my beautiful wife. Oh, shout out to Jessica her. Marie. Yes. Shout Esto. out to her. Is she from here, from the Rio She's Grande? She's the reason I moved here. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I knew thought. it. That's what I, thought. I knew yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. It yeah, happens. She yeah. saw me. She fell in love with all this. And, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. 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 Dice, dijo, ese muñequito es mío. Ay, <laughs> yeah. Got that right. So, uh, Mario Torres, saludos. No, thank you for not uh, missing the show, bro. So, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, I want to congratulate Jax. Because mm -hmm. Jax is... Um, He's got his own show now. It, it, well, it's it's his own channel, mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Jack's World. And uh, I want everybody to subscribe to his channel. We're going to put the link in the description. If not, just look for Jack's World, J-A-X-X-W-O-R-L-D. I started watching them from the beginning, the first ones he started doing, and they were like, eh, okay, okay, I got another. They're just getting better and <laughs> better are. and better. They're really good. <laughs> so I, I recommend you... Uh, you subscribe to his channel so you can find out when he look because you upload stuff pretty like every day almost right um, i'm trying to upload something every day to like you know like you know the algorithm in youtube you gotta you gotta make those hours you gotta get those subscribers and if you don't upload every yeah. day and if you're not constant do you do it at a certain time of the day or always or is it just whenever no i'm i'm experimenting right now sometimes i do them at noon when i know that people are in lunch or something like that yeah. so they're gonna be on their phone sometimes i do it like after five uh maybe like at six or or seven because do I know they're six. getting home. Yeah. Do it at 6 p.m. and then you can look at the analytics and it'll tell you where your audience is most of the time. Yeah. And if it's the dark blue is in the six o'clock area, well then you might want to you upload know it around upload that it time. around that time so you can get as many views at the first shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I've tried that too. I started the uh, you know uploading at 7 a.m. every day. Like this guy that I follow, but that guy talks all kinds of, um, you know, Mark Dice. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock every morning, he's on. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try seven o'clock. No, but bro, I wasn't getting much traction. It just I depends. tried it at lunch. You know, I said, you know, 12 o'clock, everybody's just like you. Everybody's mm -hmm. at lunch. They go on Facebook yeah. or YouTube. But the thing is, is they've got a little certain a, a span, of, span time. of time to see as much as they can. They, they, and, and, you, you know, know uh, technically it's big. Maybe like five minutes that they have to watch, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they're in lunch. You gotta eat. You gotta go uh, buy the food and stuff. They'll go two. They'll tiempo. go two minutes in and cha change it. Yes, you know at the most. But and at six o'clock, they get out of work at five. Six o'clock, they, well, they, they got all night. Yeah, and that's yeah. why they're saying a lot. A lot of people are starting to use uh, YouTube Shorts. Yeah, because oh, that will yeah. guide them to your well. Your YouTube videos. and then the YouTube is telling the creators to work on those shorts even though they're not going to be paying them for shorts yeah. but if they want to grow their channel with subscribers 
they need to make shorts. Exactly. And the reason you two want shorts is to be able to compete with TikTok. TikTok. Yes, yeah. that's why. You know, the TikTok's just kicking everybody's ass. Yeah. Instagram's trying to, and then Facebook, they're totally, man, they're, I mean, they've lost like $700 billion. Meta, yeah. you know, and Zuckerberg, and he just got fined like $26 million for campaign finance, uh, you know, crimes and shit. Yeah, you yeah. Know? and to him, that's nothing to me, if you, if you really think about it. It's nothing, but what he, I mean, he got, he got fined for meddling in an election with money and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So what you know that guy's that guy's I, you know look. Yeah, Facebook's getting harder and harder to manage I feel like especially now if you have a business page and now they have the business suite. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, they made it so much difficult. Um, it's really more hard. difficult to to navigate through all that. Yeah. And then like we have different admins and for whatever reason uh Andrew he was an admin on the page but it booted him out. And I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to how to. And get they will, and they have the worst customer service, it bro. Sucks. They have You'll no customer never service. get an answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had restrictions on my Facebook page <laughs> since August. Wow. I can't share anything. I can't uh, comment or or react to any post or uh, any post on pages. Right. Yeah. On the on the personal profiles, I can uh, just comment. I can't react. Wow. So I got all these restrictions, and I've emailed them and asked them, hey, when is this shit going to be lifted? Yeah. Right? And I don't get any answer. I don't know. It doesn't tell me when. So usually they would tell you you got 30 days. Yeah. You got 10 days. You know, I don't have any days. It's just been nonstop. So I don't. I go on my personal profile about once every two weeks, you know. But I got the business suite, and what I upload on Instagram goes straight to the right. Rock and Roll James Facebook and the Whiskey D Facebook and then I've got uh, notifications, so I'm getting traffic on those pages. Mm -hmm. And I think this guy just doesn't want me to be on my personal page, you know, sh you know, shitting on what's going on in the country and yeah, shit like yeah, that, you know, because they protect uh, Joe Biden big time, bro. You know what? <laughs> I, uh, I I deciphered their algorithm. I know what's going on with I Facebook. Saw, I, saw. Like, if, if, <laughs> I smoked this big fat joint <laughs> and I deciphered it, carnal. I deciphered it, and what <laughs> happens is that. <laughs> You know, you know, you know about throttling, right? You know how Facebook throttles yeah. uh, your posts. If you post something that has like a YouTube link or a link oh, yeah. that's gonna guide people outside of Facebook, uh -huh. they will throttle it. So yeah. it's been really hard for me, like, to promote my channel on Facebook. You put a link, and then five days later, there's like no reactions and no comments, nothing. And you yeah, see the yeah. the other posts in between about other random stuff, and those get likes uh -huh. and those get reactions. Yeah. But when you post something about YouTube or whatever, it won't because they throttle it. And I think I. I didn't no, that. that's happening yeah. because if you guide somebody out of Facebook, they're losing money because there's yeah. it's people, it's servers that are, I mean, uh, uh, users that are not uh, uh, looking at the ads and, and no. there's no traffic. They want people on the platform for as to, long as possible. They want to keep them there. That's why they have the 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 the, the Facebook Shorts like like yeah. in YouTube yeah. because they want to keep people plugged into the phone. So when you put a link to YouTube. They won't they won't throttle they'll throttle it yeah. so guys it's very important for you guys to subscribe to hashtag pvt and also to subscribe to my channel because that's the only way you're gonna find out when there's new videos and we're when we go live on mm -hmm. hashtag pvt and stuff because even though i post it on my facebook sometimes nobody it will see get it no reaction well nobody will see it so if you're subscribed to the channel you immediately get us the uh, yeah. uh, 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 um, notification a notification that we're going live you know so if you're not subscribed please do so right now and thank yeah. you for your support and let's check a little bit of uh, Jax's world i mean we're not going to be able to hear this because we don't have any we audio but they will yeah yes. but uh check this out it's super funny man Jack World, Jack World, Jack World, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here in Namu, put a 956. What up, Jack? How you doing? Bro? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Uh, right now, we're going to have some breakfast. We're going to try out a sampler right now, and it's going to be fun. And then we're going to go to Highland Gym to pick up. Pick up my vieja, yeah. my better half, my wife is here. Uh, but yeah, we out here working, man, putting in work. Mira nomás, mira nomás, mira nomás. Ah, es lo que nos vamos a comer ahorita, ¿viste? Unos pancacos, unos huevitos acá. Mmm. Damn. No mames. Más maíz. 
get old pancakes, bro. I'm gonna tell you those no pancakes are ridiculously happen. good. They have like cornmeal or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, I was really down in the face. Look at that huevo. Look at that huevo. Dripping. Oh and then look, this, they go to the house. Venomous castle. Talking in the May here. <laughs> cardale, you know, when, cardale. When you get into combat sports. My brother is smoking <laughs> out. <laughs> My brother's a look, fighter, look, by look, the way. Look. Right That's basically what's going on right now. Chico, no bien loco. Caretazos y pinche. <laughs> it's just carato, carato. <laughs> you can tell. You know, too. You know, come on. Oh, man, I'm so thrown out, yo. We're smoking, smoking some hydro. Yeah, I'm giving it to you. I told us in freeze. I was trying to get some footage, and everybody. No, Chingo Tal is feliz con la hospitality. Let me tell you. Yeah. Jack World, Jack World, Jack World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have That's to come awesome. up with a jingle, you know? Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. It's perfect, bro. No, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And yes. I remember you told me, Rock, a long time ago that you wanted me to, like, do my own content and do my channel and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm following I'm following your advice. And thank you so much for, like, uh, all the guidance and stuff. You're a big, you you know you're a good mentor. And uh, and I really look up to what you do. And thank you for the inspiration, man. I appreciate Oye, babe, it. Oye, babe, ¿y sponsor? I know. La boca yeah. At the sponsor? end, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. They, they, they got one more video to go, so now they have to renew their sponsorship. So uh, awesome. I'm hoping they renew it. <laughs> they, you know what? I would. And they should. Yeah, I would. Should. It's growing. Hey, yeah, growing. yeah. So if you want to sponsor the Jack's World, just uh, you know, contact him on his social media, right? Mm -hmm. Simon, if you look at the me. video at the end, he puts a nice little tag of the business. And uh, it's really cool. Okay. I mean, I got a good teacher, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah. learned from the best. For sure. Nothing we were, but the best. We were actually talking about, you know, content creation, and I was looking at his stuff. So I gave him some, some pointers uh, this afternoon, and we are talking about it. But, uh, we. <laughs> love to dance this music, man. Puras vueltas las traigo las cabronas. Mira, watch out, watch out, watch out. Pareces trompo. Oh my God, you guys are crazy. Big Show special, papa. Hey, if you like this t-shirt... No manos quedan unas cuantas, and we're gonna let them go. Holiday special. Ay, güey, la chinga. They're regular $35, $25, okay? Mira. Marie, is this a shirt that you want? My wife texts me. She's like, Damn, if, if you want shirt, says, yeah, I wanna buy one. I was like, okay. The only thing about these is we only have certain sizes. We have 2XL. Mm hmm. Para los. For the los, biggest fans. Para los big shows que quieren a tocar acordeón como el big show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we've got um, large, okay? Tenemos large, y 2XL, all right? Large, 2XL. Y tenemos small, okay? Para que los chavalos toquen la, la acordeón allá en la escuela, cuando tienen la escuela, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Mijo, te vas a poner esta shirt y en uh, PE vas a tocar la acordeón. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see people at the mall wearing these shirts, man. See? Yeah, I always give them a little Puro hashtag PBT. And we have medium, okay? So we have medium, we have small, mm -hmm. we have 2XL, and we have large, but very limited. So if you want a shirt for 25 bucks, if we're stocking stuffers, uh huh. Yes. Go to um, our Cash App. It's dollar sign rock and roll James, $25. TT deal, okay? Put in the memo, $25, or just like the dollar sign and 25 TT. And I'll know that it's for one of these. And then put your... Oh, for Tetera Tuesday. Yeah, Tetera oh, Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Titty. No, I said TT. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You didn't know, babe. I... What? Oh, what? Yes, you, it's because uh, you weren't saying it correctly. Why? So, TT. Oh, TT. Yeah. Okay. That Tetera went Tuesday. And then put large or small or medium or 2XL. All right, so we'll know what size it is. 
and put your address on the memo of the cash app. Now, if your address doesn't fit, put your cell phone. So we'll text you and find out where it is. Yeah. And we'll send them all this week so you get them. Okay. Yes. All right. Because we need to get rid of them. We got a we got a few left. These are the last of the Mohicans. Okay. What yeah. I Also want to remind everybody that uh, this weekend, Saturday night, Whiskey D will be performing at Tacos y Tequila Fest. Oh, yeah. Saturday, November 12th, this Saturday, Edinburgh, Texas Food Truck Park. Whiskey D will perform Piñata Protest, Matt Castillo. A Selena tribute with Carol Posadas will also be performing. And uh, Taylor Swift Tribute, Red, with Lauren Corzine. Taco Contest, Tequila Contest. Tickets at www.tacosytequilasfest.com, okay? Now, we've got a graphic uh, that for the tickets. Because the tickets, what does it say there, babe? It says ticket details, um, tequila experience, VIP includes entry into the festival, six half-ounce samples of tequila, one souvenir tasting glass, private VIP lounge close to the stage, VIP private bar, VIP lounge, VIP AC restrooms. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Those are the best. I love it. Um, <laughs> access to food vendors, craft beer booths, margarita booths, and live music. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. the best. The VIP. And then general admission. Oh, what does it say under there in the little dark uh, letters? Uh, food and drinks are not included in your ticket. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except for the, you know, the, the tequila drinks, stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the general admission. General admission says includes entry into the festival access to food vendors craft beer booths margarita booths and live music and it says food and drinks are not included all in right time. and we're looking forward to it because there's a cold front coming in saturday oh, yeah. and so saturday night's gonna be chilly nice. perfect for tequila bro uh, yes. and tacos yes <laughs> and then we're gonna pull out our leather jackets and we're gonna be on stage Rocking tearing it, it up yeah Yay. all right so that's gonna be happening selena tribute with carol posadas will be the headliner so it's happening tacos y tequilas fest.com to get the tickets okay uh saturday november 19th the following weekend it's the whiskey d toy drive concert at landmark on tower in alamo texas uh whiskey d kaiser and damaged goods sean mecca who'll be here tomorrow big reeny will also perform i'm really excited about this show Sean Mecca, Big Reedy on the same stage. Oilos. And then Kayser and Damage Good. Those are the three guys that I had freestyle rap. Yeah. And uh, and Kayser and the Damage Good, who was a hit freestyle rapper, but turned into a, like a, you know, like a Cole Wetzel type of country music, uh, did the best. I mean, uh, Sean Mecca and Big Reedy couldn't quite catch it, but I was giving them some curveballs yeah, with the beat. You were, track. you were, yeah. yeah. So we'll be there Saturday the nineteenth. We're gonna have fun, and we'll. I'll make them freestyle on stage. Uh-oh. Okay, orale. <laughs> Admission is an unwrapped toy worth ten bucks. Okay, and the toys are benefiting the kids from the Edinburgh Housing Authority. All info on the Instagram at Whiskey D Band. So go to our Instagram. You find everything there. Friday, November 25th, the day after Thanksgiving, the day after the Dallas Cowboys win. Uh, Black <laughs> Friday comedy with Mike Epps and friends. That's going to be awesome. That's at uh, Payne Arena. You can get the tickets at PayneArena.com. We will be there at the concert at the comedy show. So that should be an awesome event. Have you ever heard of Mike Epps, uh, Big Show? You sure have, yeah. He's, Dude, he's hilarious. He, he's hilarious, bro. The movie Friday, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, One of my favorites. When you see him on stage, dude. He is hilarious, man. So it's going to be awesome. Get your tickets, painarena.com. It is Mike Epps and Friends. Then on Monday, November 28th, which is the Monday after that Friday, Judas Priest and Queens Reich, and we'll be kicking off the holiday Christmas season, right? Because that's what happens, right? On Black mm-hmm. Friday, right? Yeah. So Judas Priest, who just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Look at that Woo! live show. But isn't those South Texas homies gonna get the boca shut up? Susta me one time. I thought I'd salir the accordion de la cross. Yeah. No, but I can't wait to see Judas Priest, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees that happened this past weekend. And um, the Queen's Reich will be opening up for them. So I just went to a show last week. Wasp, Armored Saint, and uh, Michael Schenker. And you know what happened? They played at the Gas Monkey in Dallas, babe. Uh-huh. And they ha- and Wasp didn't play because what? the promoter oversold the place. Oh, man. 
So then? so they they couldn't play. Oh my goodness! And a lot of people were upset, man. Wow! But wow. if Whoa. you want to check out, I got to see all the bands, and I got all the footage. So check out the video that I posted on Monday night, and which was last night, and you could see everything, man. It was amazing. And uh, me and Chas Corona had a great time. That PBT vlog guy. was cool. So birdogdenarena.com for those Judas Priest Queens Reich tickets. Follow us on Instagram at Whiskey D Band. At hashtag PBT, you can follow us and we put our, you know, who's coming on the show and clips of the show and our sponsors get a, a, a part of that as well. Uh, so if you sponsor the show, you get our hashtag PBT Instagram as well. At Rock and Roll James, you can find me uh, TikTok at Rock and Roll James 2020. Okay, and that's where I put my wife and her pantuflas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't realize you had said, Those, these are my ugly ones. I thought you were saying, these are my Uggs. Well, they were, no, I said, these are my ugly ones. Oh. Yeah, but they were my Uggs, but they were just my ugly, Uggs. ugly ones. <laughs> they were my ugly <laughs> Uggs. <laughs> Babe, but your feet make them look so beautiful. Oh mama. my God. Uh, that's all right, baby. What do you want? <laughs> 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 All right. So tomorrow we're gonna have Sean Mecca. Boas Jimenez was supposed to be here, but he called and he's gonna go. He's flying out to L.A. tomorrow morning because yes, he yeah. got a, a call from CSI. Yes. Oh shit! So, yeah. yeah, dude, that's crazy, right? Yep. Uh, so hopefully he gets a uh, you know a little part in there in that show, man. Mm -hmm. We can check him out, but uh, he won't be here. So we're gonna bring Sean Mecca tomorrow, tomorrow night, yes. and then on Thursday we got Eli Decay, mm -hmm. who's a veteran, because Veterans Day is on Friday. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. He's very excited. Thank you so much, Big Show, for coming by, man. And I hope it ain't the last time we want you to come back anytime you got some new music coming out or something. All right. Thank you, man. No, it's been an honor to be here, man. Thank you so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all the love and support, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, you'll always have our support, man. Thank for you. Sure, man. You're a great guy. Not just an amazing player, but you're on a. It's a toa madre, carnal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And tell all your friends about hashtag PVT. Woo! See you night. The best Orale. channel in the world. Orale, hell yeah. I'm on a rezo. Orale. Everybody wave. I'm on a. <laughs>